Now let's cover, we let this to this point uh, with Jake and Mark where they didn't really go into in depth about the fractal stuff. So this is where we want you to uh, really dive deep on what you're using on stage in conjunction with the PV. Absolutely. So we are still on the fractal Axe FX 2 XLs that we've had for, God, like six or seven years now. Uh, trusty workhorses. I really hope I don't jinx it by saying things like that. I got knocked oh, on. What is the last day of tour? Some wood, you know. It's the last day of tour, so I think you survived. But like, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's what they're using. It's what everyone's using. It's either that or XFX3. We will upgrade to the XFX3. It's just a pain because we have a system where our laptop's doing all the patch changes for us. It's sending MIDI out to all our XFXs which is controlling the patch changes, the scene changes, the tuners, any CC controls for like, um, let's say whammy effects or, okay. or anything that you have an expression pedal, you could draw in as a line in our, in our DAW. And we're using Cubase for that. That's, that's getting sent out to every aspect. So because we have a wireless system uh, for the ears and for our guitars, we can stand anywhere on stage. The changes happen at the right time. We are all playing to a click. So as long as we don't lose the click, which doesn't really happen unless something goes terribly wrong like, yeah. with the system. Um, I'll give you a sec. I'll give you a second while you work. No, 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 no. Could be in the video. <laughs> hey. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Andrew Gumis. I'm the tour manager for the band Under Oath. What do you know about Fractal Audio? Uh... Just about nothing, to be honest. He was telling me about his whole rig this morning. God damn it. You were talking about the uh, processors. Yeah, I've got Ableton Lite. Uh, oh, yeah. dollars that came bundled with some software for my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he, he is my North Star in this entire situation here. Tone Star. Tone Star. Here to guide you in yes. any way that I can. Well, thanks for being here. Of course. You know what? Thanks for stopping day. by. Let Let's I'm, get gonna, a hug. I'm gonna miss you, dude. I'll miss you too, buddy. Thanks for taking great care of us, man. <laughs> Nothing but love. My life pleasure. Here. My pleasure. Oh, we've been having the I'll best time. You guys too. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Where were we? Laptops, we were talking MIDI. diving into MIDI and why you have like genies in a bottle up on stage. You know, yeah, well, I mean, instead like, of two amps, bro. Well, we do have two amps. It's true. We do have two amps. We're not using them, we're not miking them up, we're using them to fill out the stage sound because it's nice to have some stage sound. So we're going through uh, the PV Invective and some cabs, some Invective cabs. We're going, so basically what I'm doing is I'm splitting, the, the main out is going to the front of house with a cab sim on it, which I think is still like our old like juggernaut cab sim that we've been using forever. And then we're getting a split of that without the cab sim that goes to the power amp return, right? The, 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 the effects loop return of the invective. So that's just going through the cab and it's nice. It sounds great. Uh, that amp was actually designed to work very well with modelers, have kind of a flat response mm -hmm. for, uh, for anything that you plug in the power amp. So obviously works very well in that situation. It's nice. Sometimes, you know, with in-ears, you don't really have a lot of vibe. Uh, you have a lot of resolution. You can hear exactly what you're messing up, which is yeah, a yeah. lot. But every now and then for certain parts, I'll sort of pop them out a little bit. It's nice to have the stage sound. Then, then I'm very, very grateful to have the cabs on stage. They sound very good mm -hmm. with the side fills going. And then you can kind of like, you know, close your eyes or get into the vibe a bit more. So it's nice to, to be able to switch between the two. And then there's certain parts where I really want to have those in. I can hear everything perfectly. And the whole setup is kind of automated. So we don't have to hire too many people because, you know, back in the day, bands would have people just switching stuff yeah. for them, you know, or doing a lot of the stuff behind the scenes. Now we have Mr. MacBook doing everything for us. As long as it works well, then, uh, then the, the whole set runs uh, very airtight. Uh, it's all sort of set to, uh, like, it, it's in Cubase. We have an arranger set up. So we know exactly how long our set is, which yeah. is kind of nice, too. So we are on the rails, which, you know, has its uh, pros and cons. Mm -hmm. But one thing that is nice is that we know exactly from when we hit spacebar what time will be done. It makes it very, very easy to keep a tour running at exactly the same it's time. It's a tidy package. Absolutely. Now, what are you using for like, uh, like amp sims or anything like that when it comes to effects and patches? I'm sure you have an abundance of sounds that you're using throughout the set, but what are some key things that people can reference to your so sound? Using the, 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 I think it's the PVH 6160, their 5150 model. The, the invective is based off of a 5150 circuit. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a circuit I like very much. It saturates very nicely. If you do any of the sort of like palm mutes, so what we, you know, we, we obviously talk about gent, but um, I've heard that these, purr, up these purr as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not a genre, <laughs> yeah. but like um, it's a lifestyle. But, uh, 
But, uh, but, but I, I like this purry quality. I like it when the low end sort of saturates. And a lot of the sort of Marshall style amps, they'll be very tight. And you'll be like, oh, you don't even need a boost on this. But they don't have that low end saturation to them. So the 5150 circuit does that very, very nicely. We like that a lot. It's sort of used for effect with a lot of our riffs and sounds, you know. So that's, that's our sort of bread and butter. We have a Tube Screamer thing, um, T808. Um, it's, the, the, the new Axe Factory actually has a model of the precision drive, the Horizon device oh, precision nice. drive in it. So when we upgrade to Axe Factory, we could just use a precision drive, which is, which is very handy. But some sort of boost in front of it, which basically helps counteract like the thicker strings and the lower tunings okay. that we're using and helps that, that the amp sort of still sound genty and tight and crunchy, right? Uh, clean tones, it'll be somewhere, something like uh, the Shiver Clean or the, the Sir Badger. Okay. Um, I think if you looked at our patches, you'd realize they're not nearly as complicated as you think. It's literally, especially just going to front of house, be like um, uh, overdrive, amp, cab sim for rhythm tone and like the gates, you know? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll have scene changes for things like, one thing that we do that is kind of cool is we have sort of three levels of tightness and it's activating like different levels or settings of the gating as a, as a scene change. So if we need a super tight part, we could just have it switch rather seamlessly to that. But then when you want it to saturate and you want it to ring out, it could do that. And, and this is just all happening in real time. And we can fine tune that riff by riff. Wow. And that's how we could get the tight part sounding really, really tight without compromising the, uh, the, the parts that need, you know, sustain. Some air. Exactly. Um, so it, it gets really, really nerdy, but, uh, but we, we, like to, we like to see what we can get away with, with that kind of stuff. Now, what do you compensate in signal-wise with not having a bass player on tour right now? Is, is that anything that gets incorporated to what you're laying out on the uh, fractal stuff? So we've been doing the same thing that we've been doing since Nolly left. Nolly was our bass player. We sort of made a bass tone with him. Yeah. And we just use his tracks, so it just sounds like him. I always find it funny when people are like, yeah, you can't hear the bass live anymore. It's like, that doesn't actually make sense because <laughs> you're just hearing him, but in better quality and more consistently. Yeah, and it is very, very loud, both out of front of house and in our ears. Yeah. It's, you know, bass is a very important part of our sound. It's a very impor uh, important part of periphery sound in general. Um, so there's, we're, we're just hearing an extremely high fidelity version of Nolly's bass um, every night in our ears, you know, and that's what we're locking into as well. And there's a ton of it coming through the side fills, a ton of it coming out of front of house. And is Jake's uh, setup completely identical to what you're doing? With it's, maybe some minor differences? There are minor differences because Jake's style and Mark's style and my style, they're all different. And this is where, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this. If you played someone else's rig, yeah. you see their settings, it works for them, it doesn't work for you. It's like everyone's very picky. Everyone's style lends itself to a certain setup. So, for example, Mark is, has a very bright style. Like if he plays the guitar, it's just brighter. So he'll have less, less presence, less treble on his patches just in general. Mm. And we'll kind of compensate for that. And uh, Marquitis, our front of house, might even compensate for that on his end. Uh, Jake's actually probably goes to, probably got the most sort of neutral out of all. Of it. He's sort of the Goldilocks, like we just everything. There's no really any harsh harsh frequencies. Okay. And I can have a bit of a bright style, but not as much as Mark. So we're all catered to just how we sound, how our guitars sound, and even some of the choices we make with our guitars are kind of geared around the fact, like Mark on his revi revised pickups went for a little bit darker pickups because he realizes how bright his sound is. Yeah. So we'll make slight tweaks, but they are generally the same philosophy.